Hello, yes, can everybody hear me? Good. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wikimania 2014. Thank you very much for coming to this session. I'm gonna be your host. My name is Candelaria, and today we're gonna be uh, speaking about language. Um, I would like to thank uh, Rob, who is our technician today, and James, who's taking care of the video as well. Um, so yeah, um, I would like to introduce our first speaker. Uh, he's Daniel Neighbor and he's going to be speaking about uh, fixing grammar errors automatically. He's a freelance software developer from Germany, and he's developed a very interesting language tool, which he will tell us about in a minute. Um, we want to encourage the free flow, so please, if you want to leave the session at any time and you know, go to another room, please feel free. And also, please, uh, we want to encourage you to share uh, anything you find interesting on Twitter with the hashtag Wikimania2014. So, yes, without further ado, I leave the floor to Mr. Neighbor. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for your interest. So, I'm going to talk about or introduce you to Language Tool Wikicheck. This is a system that looks for silent grammar problems in text. And in this uh, special case, it's going to look for silent grammar problems in Wikipedia articles and even more interesting in changes to Wikipedia articles. So we have used this system in the last few months to fix more than 2,000 errors in the German language Wikipedia. 
but it supports a lot of other languages. So here's a roadmap of the talk. First, I'm uh, going to show you how you can use this system to find style and grammar errors and to fix them almost automatically. Uh, then I'm going to explain how this system works internally. Then I'm going to explain how language to Wikicheck can help you and vice versa, how you can help language to Wikicheck to become better. And finally, I think we'll have uh, enough time for questions and answers. So about us, uh, Marcin is a co-maintainer co of language tool. He's an associate professor at the Polish Academy of Sciences. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it today to the conference because there's another conference happening at the same time. So uh, yeah, I have already been introduced. I'm a software developer from Germany. And if you are German speaking, you may know OpenTesaurus.de, which is uh, one of my other projects, which is a open source dictionary for synonyms. So, how can you use our system to find style and grammar errors in the Wikipedia? So, I'm just going to show it. So, the easiest thing is you go to languagetool.org, then you click on the Wikicheck link. And now we have two features here. One is you can check any Wikipedia page. You can add either the title or the URL, then check the page. And for pages like London, it's very long, so it will take a few seconds. And then it will show you some suggestions for potential style improvements and uh, grammar errors it think it has found. Now the thing is, for articles like London, which uh, have very high traffic and which are probably very well maintained, you will probably get a lot of uh, false alarms. That's just because if the article is already very good, there are hardly a grammar errors left, and then only the system can only show you the false alarms that are left. So what is actually more useful is this check of Wikipedia's recent changes. So what it does, uh, as the name suggests, um, we have a process running that fetches the Wikipedia recent changes 24 hours a day, and it uh, runs our software over the old version of the article and over the uh, new version of the article. And if we find more errors in the new version, then obviously this editor has introduced some kind of error. And we put all these errors in our database, and also if like, say, 10 minutes after that, someone fixes that error, not only by reverting it, but by well fixing it, we usually can detect that and we will remove it from, from our database again. So what you see here is uh, the English Wikipedia, and we have a filter for errors not fixed for 24 hours. So this will only list um, the errors that have been introduced and haven't been fixed in the last 24 hours. So this prevents uh, that you run into all this vandalism. So, so this is not a anti-vandalism tool. So let's let's have a look at some of the errors. Let's see if we can can find, well, for example, here's a typical one, this one. So someone, and the error is at the space between sentences, because here someone ended the sentence and started the next sentence without a space in between. And when you, now when you find this error, you can check, click on check page now. And then, well, we'll skip all the other problems for now, just concentrate on this one. So you can see the error here. And what language tool does now is it gives you a suggestion, which you can simply click on. So you click on it, and the suggestion, which is the same text in this case, but with the space character, it gets copied into this field. And then you click the continue button. And then you end up in the Wikipedia diff view. And you can see here, Maybe it's, it's usually a bit difficult to recognize with only white space changes, but here's a, a small blue character that has been introduced. So, well, this is another diff view. You are in Wikipedia now, and you can now save the page. And the edit summary has already been pre-filled. So, 
it's quite easy to use. In many cases, you can just click and, well, you don't even have to type anything. There's another way to integrate this. Uh, someone has written this XX tools. It, um, for every Wikipedia page you visit, uh, it adds a few additional links. And under this C full page statistic links, you will ha also have a language tool link and it runs language tool automatically. And here it suggests, it shows the number of potential problems that language tool has found. And then you can click on this and then you will get into the process to Process, process which I've just shown to you. So I've already shown there are some false alarms. Uh, one is is caused by well language tool not being perfect and the rules are not perfect. So for example, in a sentence like uh, his great great grandson, language tool might complain about uh, word repetition. And the other case is like we have to fight with this uh, media wiki syntax. For example, for this location equals 1,000 oaks, uh, it suggests to use a 1,000, which doesn't make sense, but the system sometimes gets confused by the uh, media wiki syntax, which we try to remove, but which is not so easy because we only get this diff view. So the conclusion is, of course, uh, you cannot take these suggestions for granted. They are only suggestions. Please go through them one by one and check if they are actually errors before you submit them to Wikipedia. So this is our large list of supported languages. It contains all those uh, major languages like English, French, German, Polish, Spanish. Uh, however, it's also important to note that uh, these languages are supported to a very different degree. So for example, for German, we have a quite good support. But there are other languages that have just a a, f a sh small number of rules, so they cannot detect, for those languages, we cannot detect uh, very many problems. Also, this uh, recent changes check, which I've just shown, is not yet activated for all languages. So if you want to use it for your language, then please talk to me and I'll try to activate it for your language too. So, how does this work internally? Yeah, as the name already suggests, it's based on language tool. Language tool is an open source software published under the LGPL. It's written in Java. And the interesting point is that it doesn't actually know grammar. So if you're in school and you learn a second language, your teacher will tell you how a sentence uh, looks like to be correct. What we do instead is we scan for typical errors. And we express these errors as patterns and then we just search for these patterns in the text. So here's a very simple example, one of my favorite examples. Uh, sorry for my bad English. So bad is misspelled, and I, I'm not making these errors up. It, it actually happens, you can search for this with Google, and you will find this. And as you can easily see, and that's the point of everything, a simple spell checker won't help you here, because bad is a perfectly valid word, but not in this context. So what we need is like the word bad in context, and that's what we do here. The very simple pattern you can use with the language tool is just a sequence of words. This is expressed here uh, in some simple XML. So you have just the word bad followed by the word English. That's the simplest case. But how do you come up with these rules? Well, there's error patterns, and we also internally call them rules. You can write these rules with an online tool we have developed that I'm now going to show. And it works like this. You see some error and you think, well, this is an error that I might be able to detect with, uh, with a pattern from inside language tool. So what you do is you enter the incorrect sentence then you enter the correction of the sentence, and then you click this, this button, and the tool will now guide you through the process. But first, you will get an error message or a warning 
that language two can already detect this error. Well, I'm just using this as an example now, so we can ignore that. And the pattern now is this thing. For now, in the very first step, it's just the word bad. That doesn't make a lot of sense. We need some context, so we add another token. In this case, it's just English. Now we can specify the name of the rule and a message to the user that gets shown if that rule matches. Then you click on the Evaluate button. And what happens now is that this uh, online tool runs your pattern against a part of the Wikipedia to make sure there are no false alarms introduced by your pattern. So you see the green check mark, so everything looks okay because bad English with spelled with an E doesn't actually occur in Wikipedia, which is a good sign. So the result finally is the thing, it's our internal representation of the, of the pattern. And you can send that to the developers, to us, and if it's a useful pattern, we will in, uh, introduce it into the next version of language tool. Now this was a very simple case. What you can also do is you can specify regular expressions here. Or you can, for example, negate. That means match anything but the thing you have specified. Or you can match not only words, but also part of speech tags. For example, plural nouns, or singular nouns, <coughs> or past tense verbs. You can also Okay, so this bet doesn't make sense anymore, but you can also combine this. For example, talk just as a verb or just as a noun. So in this way you can add, of course, any number of, of tokens here. And you can also skip, uh, skip tokens by specifying any word. You can reorder these tokens by dragging them around. So that's our online tool for developing these rules. Yeah, basically, a uh, language tool was already founded like 11 years ago, and we spent some time the last 11 years writing those rules. And now we have like 1,000 rules for English, and about 1,800 for German. But especially for English, we still don't have a real core developer from language tool who cares about these rules. So your help is very welcome with writing new rules for English and uh, improving the existing rules, helping so they don't create too many false alarms. Also, we have quite some languages where we have a very small number of these rules, which means you cannot really uh, detect that many errors. The languages are supported technically, but you will probably not find most errors. For example, for Swedish, we have only 26 rules. That means for, for several languages, we are looking for maintainers to help us maintain these rules. And we have a complete list of these languages which we support and their number of rules on our homepage. So these are the languages with the smallest number of rules. We also have some uh, error patterns that are specific to Wikipedia. Uh, for now, it's only it's only covering German. For example, we have in German the phrase for recently, which is neither a style nor a grammar error, but uh, in a Wikipedia article, it's often not very useful to just say recently. What you need is actually a specific point in time. Or you have this 
phrases like studies show, which is also not a grammar error, but in Wikipedia, well, you should point to that very study instead of just saying studies show. And there's also a very nice page called Weasel Words uh, that lists a lot of these, um, these phrases which are not so good. And these phrases on the Weasel Words page could also be used as patterns for a language tool. So some known limitations, I think I've already mentioned those. Well, first we can't find all errors, of course, because you need to have basically have an unlimited number of patterns for that. Also, we sometimes language tree complains about text which is actually correct. And uh, the reason for that is also sometimes that we get confused by the, by the syntax. A solution for that might be to use this parser project and well, any help with that is welcome and some technical detail. If you go through this process, which I've just shown with just clicking, you end up in the Wikipedia diff view, but this watch this page button will always be off. And that's because we don't know if you're already watching this page and we can't, can't uh, pre-select it properly, so it will always be off even if you're watching this page. So, how Wikicheck can help you if you're a software developer. You can also use Language Tool Wikicheck or Language Tool actually from a public HTTP API. You just send in some posts, some text there, and you will get a simple XML with the errors Language Tool has found. Or maybe you want to help us and you can integrate maybe Language Tool inside the visual editor. We have made some, I've made some. Uh, wiki, wiki page on our wiki about ideas how that might be approached. And of course, if you're a Wikipedia editor, which most of you probably are, I suggest you subscribe to this feed. feed. There's not just the web page with this recent errors check, but also a feed of that, so you can get fresh errors regularly. And of course, you can send us feedback so we improve language tool. So as a summary, language to wiki check can already find many errors, not all of them, but many of them, depending on the language. And it finds these errors by searching for error patterns. And we are constantly working on adding new error patterns, but your help with that would also be very welcome. So thank you. Yeah, we have enough time for questions. Yep. So, I have a few questions on now. Uh, first of all, can you elaborate uh, on the specific wiki rules? It's unclear where should those be put and where the normal rules are kept. Yeah. Second of all... Yeah, let me maybe okay. first answer it before I forget all those questions. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, organized our rules, as I said, we have more than 1,000 rules or so for German, so we have organized them in categories. And one category is uh, called Wikipedia. So it's in our standard rule set, but it's a Wikipedia category which is turned off by default for the common user. But for this wiki check thing, we turn it on. So if you have a rule, please just send it to us. We'll add it to the Wikipedia category. And then a few days later, or maybe a few weeks, uh, it will become active. Okay. Yeah, the second question was Okay, so we have, we have an API only for using language tool, should check text, but not for adding rules, but uh, the rules are expressed as XML, so I guess you could probably write some small script to turn your regular expressions into language tool rules. Yeah, well, the source code is hosted at GitHub, and uh, we also have a forum. And well, the easiest thing is you, if you start just from our homepage and go to the development page where everything is linked. Does that answer your question? Yeah.
Um, have you thought about integrating with uh, OAuth to actually allow people to make the changes directly from the interface that you have? I saw which what tool? To uh, allow people to make the changes directly from a language tool, the, the interface where you're showing the errors, rather than pushing someone out to Wikipedia? Uh, yeah, I, I'm actually not sure how to do it. So if oh. you have uh, some concrete idea, we sure, I'll, I'll would be happy. Some, some details around the OAuth stuff. Yeah, so we'd like to do that, but this is so the sending to the Wikipedia diff view is uh, the closest we could get now. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. You mentioned that you are looking for um, looking for people to work with the smaller languages to uh, to run the Google set or, or uh, are there already any people that that are with smaller languages or is everything right now to do? I uh, know uh, we support like thirty languages, so and I don't speak all of them. <laughs> Actually, only two. And so, yeah, we do have a community of about like 10 active people who are working on different languages, but we cover 30 languages with only 10 people, so it doesn't work. So maybe of our 10 languages, maybe 15 or so are not actively enough maintained. And I'd also like to mention, uh, you can do that without being a software developer. So writing these rules, that's why I've shown the online tool. Uh, well, it's not exactly trivial, but you can, you can learn that. Uh, without being a programmer. Any other questions? Yeah. One more question for me. Uh, you said that language tool is, is better than a uh, spell checker. Does it include a spell checker? I mean, if the word is not in the dictionary, will it be matched as a error? Uh, this is again one of the cases where we have a special case for Wikipedia work because we do. Language tool as a software does include a spell checker. But because Wikipedia is so difficult to spell check with all the foreign words and the proper nouns, we have turned off this feature for Wikipedia. Because you would get so many false alarms that it wouldn't be very useful. And a long-term goal is actually yeah, to, to somehow turn it on and uh, avoid all those false alarms by I don't know how. Yeah? Hello, I'm Lisa Sito from German Wikipedia. I've uh, used your tool a couple of times and uh, I was a little bit uh, disappointed that I didn't uh, find more things because what I found was excellent. So uh, these, these typical things with a human wouldn't would overlook them. So it was a really, really helpful tool and I found it a little bit it's a pity there were editors who have something against this tool the famous change version against new things. Could you talk a little bit about your experience with the communities you met? Um, yeah, well, we recently announced it on the German Kurier, and there was a discussion about that, and as you said, some people don't like those tools, um, but that's, that's a common problem. Some, I don't know, somehow spell checking made it into a standard tool, and everybody accepts it nowadays. And I think, to me, this is just the next logical step after spell checking. So I have a bit of a problem understanding how people are against this tool, because actually with a spell checker you have the same problem. A spell checker can also give you false alarms about names, for example. And it can also overlook problems. And you've got the same situation here. It's not perfect, but it's a tool, and you need to know how to use this tool. You cannot blindly trust it, but I think we have all learned this from spell checkers. So you just need to transfer your knowledge from spell checkers to this tool. It's basically an advanced spell checker. Does it answer your question? Yeah? Um, in the, the part where you were showing the actual tool usage and saying, like, you know, choosing a correct option from the, the, the values there, um, is there any learning that it's doing? Like, if someone constantly ignores a certain rule, or is there any way of actually saying this is not an issue that can actually feed back into the tool to improve the rules? Uh, no, it's not learning. So yeah, I know that would be nice, but um, you need a, a really huge amount of data for this learning thing, and I don't think we have enough users for that. And also, <coughs> this feature of sa saying this is not actually an error, yeah, yeah, actually we once had that, but again, it's the same problem. You'd need a large amount of people uh, to, to actually click that rule, to, to actually click that link to and say this is not actually a problem, and frankly, we know there are a lot of false alarms still, 
So that community feedback about saying us, here's a false alarm is not that useful because we just need to use the tool ourselves and we find those false alarms ourselves actually. It's along that, that line that you were starting to record that data even if you weren't using it right away. It would start to build up over time and it would be a uh, sort of nice extension that could be used then once there was a sufficient amount of data. Yeah. So is that data even being recorded at, now, at all right now or is it, is it no, but, no log at all? And this data of like uh, this button, like this is not actually a rule, we, we ha don't have it at the moment, so we can't record anything. And the other data, it's well, we don't record it, but it's in the Wikipedia. I mean, the Wikipedia has its change log uh, by itself. And also, we uh, pre fill this uh, edit summary with our language tool. So, at least in theory, we can, like in five years, we can see what changes have been made by language tool. Time for a final question. Okay. Yeah, one question. It's not actually a question, I just want to say if you, I'm happy to have it with Parsley, so if anybody needs help, I'm Ah, great, yeah. Okay, so, thank you. Well, thank you very much, Daniel, for that very interesting presentation. We're just going to give a few minutes to our new speaker and for people to leave the room or enter the room for this presentation, which is going to be about machine-aided article translation, also extremely interesting. And yeah, so it's going to be another half hour, and then there will be a break. If you need toilets, they are downstairs. And again, I encourage you to tweet using the hashtag Wikimania2014. So, I give you the floor. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. My name is Sandosh. I'm from Wikimedia Language Engineering team. My team also joins here. Today we are going to talk about machine-aided content translation to translate articles of Wikipedia from one language to another language. As all of you know, Wikimedia projects exist in a large number of languages. Wikipedia itself exists in 287 languages, and all of our projects exist in more than 300 languages. And the size of all these projects varies a lot. English is the largest Wikipedia with 4.4 million, about 4.4 million articles, then there are a lot of other language Wikipedias with a smaller size. Then there is an always an interesting question whether smaller Wikipedias can translate articles from the bigger Wikipedias. Also, whether English can translate articles from smaller Wikipedias and grow together. Okay. To understand this question, we need to see if um, how much overlap exists in the number of in terms of number of articles so if you look at the large two wikipedia english and german you can see that about 50 percentage of the german wikipedia articles exist in english also but at the same time it gives us a lot of potential right if there are uh, from english there are a lot of articles we can translate to german at the same time we can translate a lot of german articles to english right so this kind of potential gives 
a big opportunity for us to develop such a tool. Um, and there was a recent study conducted by Oxford, University of Oxford, um, by a person called Scott, and it suggests um, over 15 percentage of the users edit in multiple languages. So that means um, multilingual users contribute a lot of articles, they edit in multiple wikis, and the study also uh, st study also tries to understand the pattern of editing, how a user, a multilingual user edits and what are the language pairs they are translating. <coughs> so this graph is not surprising, you can see English acts as the hub, as the hub of all the languages, and then related languages as, acts as the relations. For example, Spanish, Catalan, Spanish, Portuguese, German, French, and from Chinese, you can see Chinese, Japanese. So this kind of bubble suggests that there are language pairs between them you can translate articles. And multilingual users are also a large number of editors, so you can see multilingual users make 30% of the all, edit, all edits. This study is available in the following link, or you can search for that. Um, so. Um, this gives the opportunity for Wikimedia Foundation to look at a project where we can provide a unified interface for editors to translate articles across languages. So we started this project named Content Translation Project. We started about uh, six months back and currently it's deployed in a pilot language pair, Spanish Catalan. So in this talk we are going to explain the details of the project, the workflow, the tools and um, and the opportunities. Uh, people often translate. This is not the first time uh, we, we need to provide a uh, translation interface. People always translate manually. When we talk to translators who usually create new articles, they do it in a different, different ways. Most of them are manual. Like people will be opening two articles at the same time. They'll be copy pasting articles and editing. Sometimes they will use external tools like Google Translate, Bing, such kind of machine translation tools. They will also use dictionaries to look up words. And uh, this process is manual. So we are looking at how we can use the same workflow and at the same time provide more tools and convenient interface, not going anywhere but inside Wikipedia itself. So this is going to be the workflow we are proposing, uh, uh, and this is the workflow we are present, uh, present in the current tool. So first of all, we need to identify which article is not existing in this language, and finding out which language has this article. So first step is to identify the languages. Second is create this translation as a draft and edit one or more times and publish. Okay, so this is the normal workflow. So Let's directly jump into the tool currently we deployed. Okay, so this is the tool we deployed, and this is our first release present in our beta instance, currently used by Spanish and Catalan users. As you can see, you, we are providing a two article uh, columns. One is the, the leftmost, you can see the source article, and in the middle, this is the editor where you translate articles from the left side. On the right side, we are going to provide all kind of tools we can provide for the language pair. Um, going to some more details, we are identifying the translation sections. So for example, most of the use case will involve translating a big article into small articles because that's how new articles are created, not like a full translation of entire articles. It will be often summarizing or translating few paragraphs, etc. So users can click on the sections, automatic machine translation will be applied for the paragraph, and then users are allowed to edit and adapt the machine translation, adapt the links, references, uh, summarize the state sentences, make it read more natural. At the same time, along with this process, along with the editing process, we will be supplying link adaptation tools, reference dictionaries, and more tools are coming. So we are allowing to uh, use, we are, uh, we are helping the translators to focus on the content one paragraph at a time, section by section, and we are also giving a visual alignment to map mentally, like this part of the source article is what I'm translating now. So we give a visual alignment of the source and uh, target. And uh, we provide a lot of context tools, 
depending on where you are editing. If you are editing, we will provide link adaptation tools. If you are editing a word, we will try to look up uh, bilingual dictionaries to get the word information. So this is one example where we provide the tools. So this is an article about um, um, said broke from um, Spanish to Catalan, and there is a link about hypothalamus when users clicking on or is user is editing on a word, say for example hypothalamus, then the dictionary, it's, we call it as a card, it appears on the right side with the meaning, at the same time it also identifies with the help of Wikidata that the link exists in source and target language, it gives you an overview of the link, user can navigate to that link if they want, otherwise they can use, they can add the link if they want in a word. So they give, this gives a lot of context sensitive tools whenever they um, translate. Of course, this um, first translation, that is pre-translation, when they just click on the placeholders, it comes from the machine translation tools. Um, so uh, we, we will be providing more tools. At present, we, we are providing one machine translation tool, dictionaries, and uh, links for one language pair. So uh, links are one um, difficult um, difficult to edit stuff when, when you translate because you need to f manually find what is the corresponding link in your target language and you need to edit the um, link inside wiki text. We are avoiding that step by automatically adapting whenever you translate a section to a target language along with the machine translation we are going to adapt the links automatically with the help of Wikidata. So it is it will be very rare that you need to edit the links. It will be auto at least the targets will be edited automatically. The labels if you want you can edit. This data about the links is coming from Wikidata. So this is another example. Um, one of the question about this tool always people ask is, is what happens if people abuse it? If machine translation is provided, I can click on the translation and I can fill the target article and just publish, right? Because it is an abuse, like it may not read naturally. Depending on the language pair, the quality of the machine translation will be less. Um, so we use multiple approaches for this. One is we are going to measure it, um, how much you are going to translate manually, how much you are going to translate just using the machine translation. So we give some warning like, okay, 70% of the translation is coming from machine translation and 30% is manual translation. And depending on the language pair and the community requirements, we can put a threshold. And based on that, we can give that user interface about the threshold you're exceeding. Currently, we are not stopping users to publish, but we are just uh, giving a warning that uh, it's machine translation and potentially we will be adding some categories if it is crossing some thresholds and um, so that the community can review and either they can revert or um, edit improve the article. So um, going about the, uh, talking about the tools, machine translation is a still, a, still a challenge because availability of open source machine translation systems um, that too, in 287 languages we are talking about is very less. So th there is only um, few machine translation tools available that too, in open source it's very less. The machine translation tool we use for Spanish to Catalan language pair is Apertium. Uh, that is an open source machine translation developed in Spain and people reported that its quality is very good, at least for uh, Spanish and Catalan. Uh, from our testing users, were saying that with uh, by editing two or three words, they get a completely natural translation for the language pair. That's one of the reasons we took Spanish Catalan as one of first as the first language pair. So uh, we don't have much choices in the open source. Then there is Bing, Google Translate, Yandex as the third party machine translation service. Um, we might start using as a backend. We are not sure, but at least for now, it's only a Persian. Dictionaries is also another uh, challenge. We have dictionary as the project, but it's a data is not machine consumable to provide as a, um, to use it as an API. We are using 
um, dictionary files as a JSON files, or we also have a backend to use the dict protocol, free dict uh, protocol based dictionary. Uh, but the quality of this dictionary is very low. Some, for some languages, it will be easy and it will be uh, very good quality. Sometimes it's very bad. Link, link adaptation is another tool. Um, link adaptation is done with the help of Wikidata. It works a lot and people gave us a lot of good feedback about that we are saving a lot of effort in terms of identifying the links and uh, adapting the targets automatically. Templates. This is one of the larger problem. Uh, we, we are using a selective whitelisting approach for the templates that are used in large numbers. We try to adapt it using a mapping between the language pair. If that is not possible, we are just uh, dropping it. Uh, we are thinking about multiple strategies to support, but <coughs> this may be a lesser problem because the purpose of the tool is to bootstrap a new article, not to um, do f further edits in an existing article, but to start a non-existing article with um, minimal content or whatever content the translator wants to add as the first version. Um, talking a little about the uh, technology, this project is mainly powered by Parsoid project. Um, the editing interface is not wiki text, it is HTML rich text editor. For editor also it's very minimal, we don't provide any, not much formatting tools, very minimal formatting tools because we don't want to use a uh, user to focus on formatting but focus on creating a new article using translation because they can do all formatting at the later usual visual, edit, visual editor or wiki editing interface. Uh, we have this a Node.js server as the backend um, that provides all the backend tools, dictionaries, machine translation, link adaptation, and we have usual media wiki APIs. Um, so the next part is about finding one to translate. Um, I'll invite Amir to talk about that. Hi. Uh, finding what to translate. So we have the translation interface, which uh, Santos showed very well. We have the backend technology to help it all work. Um, but how do we actually get people to do the work? How do we convince people to do the work? How do we convince more people to translate it, more people to edit? So these are the entry points. Um, this uh, will hopefully be developed soon, but this is the design. Uh, this is the translation center. Uh, according to the things that you edited and read and translated in the past, we are going to suggest you some more articles to translate. Uh, uh, this is something that is developed already and will hopefully be deployed soon as a beta feature. So we all know the interlanguage links on the sidebar. Uh, they show in which uh, languages this article is available. Uh, we are going to use the familiar red link uh, analogy to show that in this language the article is not available. Uh, how are we going to decide the language? This is something that we are discussing right now. Uh, we have several strategies for that. Uh, we can check the user's user interface language. Uh, it is sometimes, it is in fact quite often different from the site language. Uh, we can check the user's geolocation, we can check uh, uh, what other languages does the user know according to the Babel uh, user box and user boxes and so on. We haven't decided it yet. Uh, this is something that we are going to roll out uh, slowly but uh, hopefully surely. Uh, once you press the red link, you will be offered to create an article from scratch, not as content translation, but simply open uh, an empty page for editing this article in that language, uh, or to use this button to translate the article from another language uh, to open content translation. So this is one of the main entry points. Um, and these are, these are the two main entry points that we have. Uh, in the future, we may also have entry points uh, from uh, uh, Wikidata, if uh, there is a list of articles in Wikidata and uh, your language doesn't exist, we'll possibly show uh, an entry point there. Uh, or maybe in red links in other articles. Uh, so you have a red link in your, uh, you, you have an article in your language, but you have a red link uh, and this uh, page is available in another language, you'll see some kind of little bubble there. Maybe you can translate this article from another language. Uh, this is a plan for the future. Uh, we do hope that this will drive growth and this will uh, get people to 
uh, do something, show show people an opportunity to do something. Um, that's uh, I think what we have uh, here on on this URL. You can actually try this in action. This actually works already and deployed. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, you obviously welcome to give us feedback. Uh, this is something that uh, pertains to everybody. Uh, this is something that pertains to all languages, including English. We do hope that things, as I said, we do hope that people uh, will translate things from their languages to English as well. Uh, we want to hear from you. Uh, we want us to try it. Uh, please talk to us here. Uh, we are here all the time and we'll be very happy to show this. Uh, do try the tool, do, do read the blog posts about it, and do try the current URLs uh, which where it actually works and shows up. Uh, and, very importantly, if you are familiar with any uh, digital dictionaries or digital machine translation tools in your language, especially if they are open source but not only, please talk to us about this. Uh, we are collecting them now and we want as uh, many of them as we can collect. Yeah. So, uh, since we have time, I'm going to do a small demo. So, as I said, this is deployed in our beta cluster right now for language pair Spanish and uh, target language pair being Catalan. So I'm loading an article about, uh, uh, it's about K5, <coughs> should go. Uh, so between Spanish and Catalan, this is what I was saying that I can click on the placeholders, I get the machine translation. So this is the machine translation coming and I can keep on translating. Uh, well, so. As per the users, the quality of the machine translation is good, so it's quite possible that whatever I'm filling on the right side is already a candidate for the article. Um, but at the same time, we have a lot of tools. I'm clicking on this um, link, I get the tools filled, or filled up already. I can use this tool to find out what exactly the article, or I can just um, use, the use these tools to uh, remove the link or add the link. I can do um, dictionary lookup. Mm. Yep. So I can select some words. I get uh, dictionary and the links on the context. Well, that's what. And finally, you have this progress bar. I can just click and it will just get published. Currently, we are publishing in our username space not in the main name space and we might continue for some more time to publish in the username space not in the main main name space people can copy that article once they are ready that's it time for questions Well, uh, you can click on machine translation will already aut automatically translate. I, I think at present it's not translating, but that's right. It means a title can be also edited here. Um, we expect that most people will uh, get to this page uh, through the entry point, which I was talking about. In the entry point, by default, uh, it's the same title as in the uh, source language. But you also have a, in the in the entry point already you have a little box where you can write a new name. Yeah. Uh, this is done under the assumption that a lot of articles are uh, about uh, people, uh, and uh, very often not definitely not always, but very often uh, the the names are written the same in both languages. So this will work for quite a lot of people. Uh, giving this parallel text back to a person, right? Yeah, yeah, we are planning to work because most of this machine translation system works on a statistical machine, so using the feedback loop with the parallel corpora. At present, we don't provide it, but it's always possible to get the source and target revisions and take it, but there is no tiny easy way, but we might provide that an API or dump of translation so that machine translation systems can improve.
Yep, so pleasure. Yeah, uh, so, so when you're translating from one language to another language, how do you yeah. translate the entire sentence when you're taking the words from the dictionary or uh, uh, the other dictionaries? It's translating the entire sentence, not just words, right? It's uh, as of now we are translating paragraphs, sections. So it can be figure captions, headings, paragraphs, tables, as uh, uh, full sections. Yeah. So how does it translate that? Uh, we use the Persian machine translation system. Okay. So do we have like a list of sentences already being translated and similar kind of uh, logics, or, or how does it work? Machine translation systems has a set of rules and dictionaries, everything. It's, it's a complex, actually. Machine translation systems are very complex. We just use that API to do the translation. Okay. They take care of all grammatical syntactic checks between two languages. Okay. Did you check for any other Indian languages? Machine translation systems are not existing for Indian languages. Google being uh, centered into English, Hindi, but for many other languages, at least the quality is very less. Yeah. But uh, practically it doesn't exist. For, uh, that, that's the case for most of the languages, like for the top languages we have, like, for example, a Persian claims to support some 37 language pairs, but uh, if you look at the quality of the translation, we might not be able to use all 37 because the quality will be less. Spanish Catalan is one of the um, good quality um, language pair to support. Yeah, so we market it two, two ways. First of all, when you publish, we tag it as something like this was created using content translation from this language. And um, at present, we don't do anything, but if this crosses some threshold, we might add a category that says um, machine translated article. Then the community from that target art, um, community can either revert or improve this article. So machine translation is given as a template. So if you look at this, this is the machine translation provided by the system. Uh, uh, we are encouraging users to edit here. So this is the editor. You need to adapt it to make it read naturally in your language. First of all, before publishing, you need to do this adaptation. So I, I forgot to mention, this is a uh, um, browser's native rich text editor. You can use usual formatting, like of making it as bold, italics, underline, but in future, we might provide very basic formatting toolbar, but for now it's very basic because, as I mentioned, uh, formatting is not the focus of this tool. We want to be make it very simple for creating content. It can be done later at any revisions once published. Uh, it's it's a usual thing in Wikipedia that articles are uh, started by one person and then edited by more and more people. So this is a tool for starting an article from another language. Uh, it, it is possible to do such a thing manually today, as Santos said at the beginning. Uh, we are just helping to create the first version in, uh, as efficiently as possible. And after that, it just goes to the usual Wikipedia uh, cycle of editing and proofreading and improvement. Okay, so, and my second question was, as a simple user that I am, you know, um, so I, I can still, what can I do? Simply, in simple terms, I can, I can still, uh, so imagine I do this, um, instead of editing the article straight away, do translate from English, and then as I translate, there will be suggestions coming up, and then I just edit that, and it goes to the flow like you just said. Yep, yep, okay. that's it. Okay. We will provide as much tools as we can provide. 
but just like in pre pre uh, before this talk, there was a talk about the language tool. So uh, for every language pair, there are such uh, language tools existing that helps the translators to translate. The idea is to uh, work with the community and uh, try to integrate all kind of such tools on the try side as supporting tools to aid the translation. It can be dictionaries, spell checkers, grammar checkers, um, uh, link adaptation tools, references, any kind of tools that helps this process easy. At present, people are using these tools, but as a, um, a distributor, like they use multiple times and multiple tools. We want to provide a unified interface that is that resides inside Wikipedia. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think this is really exciting, particularly the, the routes also to, to recruit users into translating articles by identifying where you know where things are missing, recommending articles. Like that. I think it's really interesting. Have you? I'm curious whether you've thought about the workflow of expanding an existing article with additional translated content or, or not, and whether this tool could could help in that standpoint. I know that this has been so far, I think, geared towards starting new articles, which is, yes. is clearly a great need, but there's also a lot of articles that are tagged, oh, expand this further with content from whatever language. Yeah, so uh, one thing we are planning is right now it's only for starting one. Once published, there's no way you can come back and do this. We will improve this something like a draft translation. You can finish 50% of the translation, come back later and finish the translation. That feature is something in our immediate roadmap. Translating an existing article is not immediately in our roadmap, but uh, we are aware of that use case. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah, the. Have the last questions, So currently, no. Uh, it's a very complicated thing. We do such a thing for translation <coughs> software uh, in the, on the Translate Wiki website, uh, which is also maintained at least partly by ourselves. But for software, it's very simple because it's all chunked up in, in very clear chunks. A Wikipedia article changes very rapidly. Uh, it can change uh, dramatically uh, after a very short time. And this is something that is hard to track by software automatically. Uh, so we intentionally postponed it. We may do something like this in the far future. We very much want to do this. Uh, it's just that if we would do this, uh, we would not release uh, this. Uh, we, we intentionally decided not to do it for now. We may do this in the future. Okay. That's a very good question. We would love to do this someday. There's some work being done by the password project, which will allow them to uh, look at the changes and actually track where paragraphs have changed and which ones have stayed the same and so on. So in a way, if you want to do the work, as you're suggesting, which would be very helpful, it's dependent on this piece of work first, and then we can get it Okay. Can you share the um, articles that you have created? Uh, yeah, so uh, last time I checked a couple of days ago, uh, there, there were uh, 40, 43 uh, full articles, fully published as, uh, as Wikipedia, complete Wikipedia articles after proofreading and publishing and uh, you know templates and categories and all such things uh, these are real articles as you can see uh, with photos and everything and categories uh, you know uh, and references uh, and info boxes uh, so this is actually used already uh, even though it's in beta and even though it's, it involves some manual steps on the way uh, so this uh, this actually works, and we have some like uh, five people uh, using it constantly, uh, and it's it's growing, and people are talking about this, and uh, we really appreciate the feedback. One one last. Yeah. Uh, I'm just feedback to improve the machine itself. Uh, not now. There was a similar question already. Not now. Uh, we very much do want to do such a thing. We want to we want to make at least um, uh, a storage of parallel sentences so that uh, machine translation develop uh, yeah machine translation engine developers would be able to query it and learn from it uh, statistically. We also are very carefully thinking about. Uh, letting the user uh, improve the, the on the initial machine translation, uh, but 
these are future projects. Is, is a Proteum uh, rule based or suggesting? Rule. Rule based. Rule. A Proteum is rule based. Uh, we don't have any more time. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for being such a great audience. Thank you, obviously, to our speakers and to the Barbican for hosting us. The next session will be here in half an hour. We're going to be talking about multimedia, still within technology. So there's a half an hour break. So I invite you to, you know, go to the toilet, go around to another session if you want to. And we'll be back in 30 minutes. Thank you very much.